As the world rushes to vaccinate for COVID, the fourth most populous country, Indonesia, faces a monumental distribution challenge. Its 280 million citizens live across 17,000 islands. But this is compounded by a more serious problem. Vaccines require a specific temperature range to be shipped and stored. That magic temperature is 2 to 8 degrees Celsius. If they are too cold, they aren't as effective. If they get too hot, they are inactivated. My name is Mike Schiffler. I'm the CEO of Red Lightning, which is a charity aid organization focused on solving logistic and operational challenges for disasters. The UPS Foundation has asked me to come to Indonesia to take a look at last mile delivery for COVID vaccines in poor and hard to reach areas. First world countries have a huge advantage because of existing infrastructure, things like electrical grids and roads and planes and refrigerated trucks and people and systems that already know how to move things around at cold temperatures. And therefore, we are able to predict which countries will run into problems based on their existing infrastructure. In one of the scouting trips that we did, I saw a picture of a vaccine carrier that was ice-based. Now, ice-based boxes are great, but they have a limit in that ice melts quickly. And so depending on the size of the carrier, you may be limited to just a couple hours before the ice melts. You could add more ice and you could get a lot more time, but the problem with that is that as it gets larger, it also gets heavier, and that becomes a problem if you're traveling six, eight, 10, 12 hours away. So we're really looking for a solution that is small, compact, light, easy to use, that can maintain these temperatures. Doing the research with UPS, we determined that the best solution was something referred to as a Credo. This is golden hour technology that was developed in 2003 by Pelican to maintain blood for the US military on the battlefield. Blood also requires specific temperatures. Credos are phase change. They use a paraffin type wax in six panels surrounded by a vacuum sealed insulation that can maintain this two to eight degrees Celsius for anywhere for, from two to five days, depending on the payload. Now, credos and phase change materials are being used all over the world. It's just that there's gaps where we're finding that medical teams just aren't aware of it. And not only for COVID vaccines, for all large molecule medicines, these two to eight boxes are critical to the cold supply chain for the poor and the hard to reach. And so in doing that research, I approached the Ministry of Health in Palu and said, hey, you know, we got this great solution. I know you have a lot of places that are hard to reach. What do you think? At first they were skeptical. They didn't want to risk losing the vaccines. I still felt there was an opening there. So I went back to Jakarta and I decided I was going to conduct some tests on my own. After testing the Credo in Jakarta heat, Michael returned to Palu to meet with the Ministry of Health to present the data, as well as active boxes the team could inspect. It was at this meeting the Ministry of Health decided to use the boxes for vaccinations. After purchasing and installing two freezers, which are needed to condition the boxes, Michael trained the Ministry of Health on how the boxes worked. The following week, a credo box was used to carry vaccines to three remote villages, the first of which was Dombu, two hours west of Palu city. The local clinic there, or Puskasmas, serves 12 other surrounding villages of about 7,000 people. The clinic there suffered damage to its solar-powered refrigerator and therefore had no way to store vaccines on location. The Credo carried the first vaccines to this region, serving many who had been waiting months to receive the vaccine. The following day, Michael and the team traveled four hours by truck and another two by motorcycle to County Wu, a village deep in the mountains of central Sulawesi, carrying vaccines that were used that day at another vaccination site.
The following day, Michael and the team traveled back to Gimpu and then to Lindu, where another vaccination was supported by the Credo. Officials were convinced they had their answer for last mile delivery. Shortly after their test, UPS sent an additional 10 credos to the area, bringing the total to 17. Michael purchased additional freezers for the area, placed at strategic locations Kulawi and Gimpu, so vaccination teams wouldn't need to return to Palu to condition the boxes. Neighboring Pozo Regency also expressed interest, and they received four credos, at the time of this recording, three more Regencies are interested to receive and use the Credo boxes. In conclusion, there were two fabulous lessons we learned here. Number one is that I believe the phase change material boxes are the short-term solution for last mile delivery. They're cheap, they're easy to use, relatively little setup training, and they can be implemented pretty much anywhere in the world. We have a solution now from the manufacturing point to the last mile point of use. Any place that you can travel within four or five days, you can reach using one of these boxes, not just for COVID, but for all medicine. To me, that was a huge relief. We, we have a solution now, we know what it looks like, and we can repeat it in other countries. The second valuable lesson here is the number of people who were involved in this project, from the Salvation Army, who helped us with so much of the operations, UPS Healthcare, we had the Ministry of Health from SIGI. There's literally probably 40 or 50 people directly involved in this project. And the lesson for me is that if we can come together and focus on the solutions, we have unlimited ability to create miracles. And that was very heartwarming for me. I was just so thrilled to meet everybody and to learn so much about cold chain management. And I'm just thrilled to have had this opportunity and I look forward to the next trip.